In this video, I will walk you through my mood photography process step by step. Hi everyone! My name is Daniela Halvorsen. I'm a commercial photographer with focus on product photography. On my journey as a product photographer, I have noticed that customers and people in general have a misconception about what it takes to make a creative image. They think it's about just pressing the button on the camera and then the magic is done. It's not. Never say but hey, I am here today to walk you through the creative process behind uh, mood photography. For this video, I actually filmed the entire process of four mood photos I've taken for a summer campaign this year. Something you need to know is that within product photography, there is many different types of photography and today we're going to be focusing on mood photography. What is mood photography you may ask? The name is actually quite self-explanatory, it's a type of photo that conveys a mood. This type of photography is used to showcase a product in a beautiful, inviting and in an appealing way. It basically helps the viewer to visualize what their life would look like if they use that product. I would say that actually mood photography is meant to inspire and to induce a particular feeling to the viewer. Here is the 24 steps I took for this specific mood photo summer campaign. That was a lot of steps, don't you agree? As you know, so far taking a photo is not just clicking a button, so stop thinking that photographers just click buttons, okay? There is a lot of planning and logistics behind a creative photo. Let's take a deeper dive and see what each step involves, shall we? Brief analysis, planning. This step is all about planning. I sit down with my email open, I try to understand the creative brief that the customer has sent to me and I analyze colors, textures, props and the mood from the inspirational photos attached to that email so I have a better understanding of what the client wants to achieve. If there is something about the brief that is unclear, I return to the client and I ask questions to make sure that I actually know what they want because once the photos are taken, there is no way back. So that's why in this uh, particular step, step number one is so important that I know what the client wants so I can deliver what they want. And sometimes, very often, they don't know what they want. They know what they don't want when they see the end result. And then it's too late to make changes. That's why it's so important to just have a clarification and make sure that I, you understand what the client wants. Step number two, ideas research. Here I research for ideas. I take the client's wishes into consideration and then I do further research for inspiration and for ideas on my favorite platform, Pinterest. I search for different types of summer juices or smoothies. I collect data like fruits that match well together in terms of shapes, textures, color and size, props that can complete uh, or enhance the product I'm photographing, and last, background colors and textures. I also search for inspiration on Instagram to be up to date to the latest trends. And sometimes I get distracted in the process by this cutie. Step number three, props list. Here I basically make a list of all of the props I'm going to need for that photo session and I collect them. I either use items that I currently have at home or if there is something very specific that I or the client needs, then I buy them. 
Since I've already used time in the past buying items for mood photography, I usually just end up using them. Step number four, items ingredients list. In this step, I basically think through all of the food items I might need for the photo session and then I buy them. If a mood photo requires food, which it does for this project, I then think through all of the different items and ingredients I might need to make the, this appealing and healthy juice or smoothie. Then I also buy some extra ingredients so I can use them as decorations for the photo. Step number five, photo sketch. I make a photo sketch of how I want the photos to look. This step helps me imagine and visualize how I want the final photos to look like. It's basically like a visual guide to help me when building up the scenes in the photo studio. It helps me settle on my creative decisions, which <laughs> saves me time on set. It can really be overwhelming to have to take decisions on set in addition to think about all of the technical sides while taking a photo. Step number six, studio preparation. Here, I make room for this new project. I organize the studio from the previous photo session I had, and I clean up and set up lights and everything else that I need for this project, including setting up this desk from Ikea to have extra surface to prepare food. Seven, backgrounds and props. On this step, I collect all of the backgrounds I want to use that match the colors of the juices and smoothies I will be making. I also collect all of the props I need to avoid walking back and forth looking for things. Everything needs to be ready before the photo session starts so I can be 100% focused on the creative process. Step 8. Food, tools and machines. Since my kitchen is on the first floor and my photo studio on the second, I have to move my kitchen supplies and tools to the studio. I take with me the blender, knives, spoons, food and anything else I might need for this creative production. I place all ingredients on the table in order to have a good overview of what I'm going to use. 9. Scene Setup On this step, I start by setting up the first scene for the photo. I set up the background, the base, the props, products that I'm going to take photos of, and everything that is going to be part of the photo. 10. Food preparation. Now that our scene is set up, it's time to get our hands dirty and sticky, yay! Preparing food for a photo demands time. Be ready to spend some of your time preparing it. 11. Light testing. On this step, I basically measure and test light. I start by setting up one light with a softbox. That's my main light. I take a shot and check it to evaluate if I need to set up a second light. The look and mood I want to achieve in a photo is very much related to how a light is set up. For these photos, I want them to look fresh, bright and vibrant to give summer vibes. I then measure the light to get the correct exposure and tone on the images I'm going to photograph in that session. This is an important and crucial step in product photography because the color of the product has to be accurate so customers that buy online know what they are getting. In this case, glass doesn't really have color, but instead it reflects all colors around but I still wanted to get proper colors on food and the props. After the light is tested and measured, I then take a picture of a gray card and I check the histogram on camera to assure that the photos won't look overexposed or underexposed. And that's my dog walking in. <laughs> Hi, Aiko. Everything has to be perfect. Camera settings. After the light is measured, it's time to match the camera settings to the reading of the light. For this shoot, I chose the following settings. 125th of a second, f8, ISO 100. Step number 13, background music. You know, working in a photo studio with no music, it's a no-go. I need to have music, preferably upbeat, 
because it just helps me to get into that creative zone and also gives me the energy I need to get the job done. 14. Photo testing. After the scene is set up, now it's finally time to test some shots and try different angles. I take a test shot of the current scene and I try to find the best angle. Maybe move the camera angle higher up so we can see what's inside the glass better. Maybe move it lower down to make the glass look bigger and focus more on the flamingo figure. 15. Scene adjustment. Once I have settled on the camera angle, I then adjust the scene according to the camera framing. That might mean that I have to adjust the props so they look good on camera. Props often need to be moved from their original placement in order to look better from that view angle. Once the liquid's food are in place, I have to act fast and take the photos as fast as possible so the ice won't melt and change the liquid or the mint leaves will still look fresh because they dry quite fast once you put them on set, for example. This is why it's so important to have everything ready before start taking photos. 16. Scene change. Here I simply repeat step 9. Once the first mood photo is taken, it's time to change to the next creative scene. I place all props chosen for that scene. I test textures and colors, choose the background and so on. Even though I made a plan for each scene prior to the photo shoot, I often do changes on set. This is because maybe the textures, colors or props I had in mind didn't really appeal to me. 17. Studio cleanup. The studio has to be cleaned, everything has to be stored away uh, before I leave the studio. So that means tabletops have to be cleaned, trash has to be emptied, food has to be taken down to the kitchen and be stored in the fridge, so on and so on. 18. Turn off lights. Now that the show is over, it's time to turn off the lights. These lamps get quite hot even though they have a cooling system. The faster I turn them off after the photo session is over, the better. Step number 19, files backup. Uh, so basically when I'm done with the photo session and with the cleanup and everything, I go down to my office, I insert a card on my computer and I start copying the files to my private server. After that step, I then do a double copy on Lightroom. I import the photos to Lightroom and I have a copy of the files there. So I always have two backups. In addition to that, my server has a backup. It backups itself. This is so important because I can't lose those files. After spending so many hours working and taking photos and all of that, I just can't miss those files. 20. Lightroom. Now we are actually entering one of my favorite parts of the whole creative process, the editing. <laughs> In this step, I simply press the enter button on my keyboard and boom, everything is edited and perfectly retouched. It's amazing. Just kidding. That's how my clients think I edit. But the reality is that it takes much more than just like pressing a key on my keyboard. In Lightroom, I begin the selection process. I choose the best photos and extra photos I might need to merge together in Photoshop in order to achieve the final look I had imagined. Before I proceed with color correction, white balance and applying my presets in Lightroom, I import the photo taken earlier of the color chart. This color chart software ensures a good color accuracy on my photos. It also gives an accurate white balance, which affects my colors. 21. Photoshop. Oh, Photoshop is my favorite tool ever. I just love it. I use it every day. And man, this is where things really start to get in shape. It's where I can turn something simple into something really beautiful and amazing. I, I just love this part of the process. It, it really allows me to put my heart into it. Um, and it, it's just like, if there is anything I can compare to, imagine that you're sculpting, you're building something with your hands, right? 
you know how it's gonna look like in the end um, but there is a process you start building it right and then at the end when you look at it you're just amazed by what you have done because it's like this is really cool this is really beautiful and that's how I feel about Photoshop it's like it allows me to bring my imagery my photos to the next level um, and people that don't understand the advantage of retouching they tend to be very skeptical about what they call manipulated photos because they don't really understand the power of Photoshop at least the way I do to me is basically a tool that allows me to be creative and it gives me freedom to express myself I'm very detail oriented and Photoshop allows me to go through all of the details in the photo and, and just make it better so yeah I'm, I'm very passionate about Photoshop and this is a topic that really excites me and um, yeah I'm, I'm just gonna stop there so yeah basically Photoshop is a tool that allows the creator to do something creative, unique and beautiful. In Photoshop, I do everything an image might need to enhance it and make it look more professional. That could be anything from merging different photos into a new photo, removing light cast, removing dust or anything I really find undesirable on the photo. And voila! Perfect images are possible to achieve because of Photoshop. So thank you Photoshop for that. I love Photoshop. I just love that tool. Okay, enough of that. Step number 22, 23 and 24. I'm just gonna basically merge them all together and there's not much to say here really. After I'm done retouching the photos in Photoshop, after I've achieved the result I had imagined in my mind, I then export those files and save them on the right folder. Then step number 23, I upload those files to Pix I said, that's an online gallery I use to deliver the photos to the client in a professional and modern way. Step number 24, I then share the link of that gallery to my clients and I deliver the photos to the client and hopefully they will be very happy with the result. <laughs> So this is basically the creative process behind mood photos step by step. It's my creative process, okay? Other photographers might do something different. So this was my creative process. I hope you had fun following along <laughs> and I hope you haven't reached your knowledge today. So next time you see a photographer, don't tell him you just press the button. Okay, now you know it's not just about pressing the button, it's about skills, it's about expertise, planning, experience, knowledge, and so on and so forth. Have a lovely day. I need to go for a walk with my dog now. I hope you really had fun watching this video. See you on the next one. Bye bye. <laughs> I go. Do you want to go on a trip? Bye. In this video, I'm gonna walk, 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 Step, 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 We'll walk you through my mood photography creative process. As you've learned so far, there is a lot of logistic. Step by step. I first gonna. No, 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 no. Cut, 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 cut. Who said it was easy to make videos, hmm? hmm? No one. That's right, no one said it was easy. Hello everyone. My name is Aiko. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Cut! <laughs>